Alright, I don't know how long this video is going to be. You'll find out before I do. I only have about maybe 9 minutes and 50 seconds left, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. I want you to close your eyes with me. Or don't. I wouldn't know if you didn't anyway. Let your imagination take control for just a minute. Promise it won't be that painful. When somebody says Appalachia, what comes to mind? Now don't say it because I can't hear you. But you're probably thinking about the mountains, old rustic cabins, nice cold glass of sweet tea with like a little lemon slice in it. Yeah. Okay, so clear your mind out again. What about when someone says mountain man? I bet you see like a big brawny man with a thick beard and flannel probably carrying like a big wood axe. Or you might be picturing what we call a hillbilly. And you know exactly what I mean. That tall lanky fellow who's missing a few teeth, wears a hat that's just too big, has an ungroomed beard, it's pretty gross, he doesn't wear shoes. He's that guy that seems like really friendly but will threaten to shoot you if his trusty dog doesn't get to you first. Moonshine, tobacco, big gun cornbread, roadkill. You have that exact image, whether good or bad, in your head right now because of years of pop cultural influence. Now a trip to the archives of Appalachia showed me that this stereotypical image of the hillbilly is rooted deep in the visual arts and the imagination. In a vertical file labeled Stereotype Psychology Appalachian Region, there is a 20 plus page paper titled Images of the Southern Appalachian in America from 1920 to 1940 written by one Clyde H. Ray. This paper details the specifics of the image of the Southern Appalachian from the 20s and the 30s and how that typical image arose from the generalizing of one group of Appalachian people regarded as the third class and most poverty stricken of the Southern Appalachians. So basically you had your three classes of Southern Appalachians. You had your successful big time farmers had like the real big farms and then you had like your middle class who had like farmland but not not as much and they just you know middle class and then like you had your your bottom of the bottom and that's where the hillbilly comes from so from there the official icon of Appalachian culture took hold creating its own entire subculture fan base and very mixed emotions so there is a lot of places around Appalachia itself particularly in the Smoky Mountains for example like in East Tennessee that capitalize on this very offensive image. Uh, there's live dinner shows, there's legally operated moonshine distilleries, and there's souvenir shops with hillbilly baubles and trinkets like, like an outhouse emergency kit that consists of a cigarette, corn cob, and matches tucked into a piece of wood. Each of these only further encourage tourists and outsiders to embrace this bizarre stereotype, but how does that make the local Appalachians feel? So to figure out how this image affected actual local Appalachian people, I conducted a short little survey to see how that stereotype carries over into today and what it means to people. So in my survey, I was required to ask 10 questions or else the site wouldn't post it. So I asked 10 questions regarding the emotions towards the hillbilly stereotype. I did only get 20 responses, but each one was a lot more surprising to me than what I was expecting to get out of people. Of the 20 who participated, 16 of them claimed to be from the Appalachian region. And some of you may be wondering, well what exactly is the Appalachian region? Because some people generally think it's like Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. And maybe like the Virginias. And no, nobody really knows what the Appalachian region is. So, I will define it to you. The Appalachian region, as defined in ARC's authorizing legislation, is a region that follows the spine of the Appalachian Mountains from southern New York to northern Mississippi. It includes all of West Virginia and parts of 12 other states, Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, Maryland, Mississippi, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia. Also, out of those 20 responses, only six of them claimed that they would actually call themselves a hillbilly, while the other 14 said they would not. After that, I asked each participant to actually define for themselves what they thought a hillbilly was. And the responses I got were really interesting. Like, nobody actually knows what the definition of a hillbilly is. Some of the responses that I got were, for example, a good-hearted person, happy-go-lucky, no monkeys on their back, worries-free. But right under that, I got a response that says, uneducated, toothless, fiddle-playing smoker. I have another one that says, someone from a rural, mountainous region who has a strong accent and is usually of lower socioeconomic status, 
with a lack of education. Which, that one is actually probably the most accurate one out of all of these. As society would say a hick, no shoes, bad teeth, trailer park living, etc. I think a hillbilly isn't anything but a degrading term. If a person hunts, fishes, can live off the land, doesn't need help from anyone, but will give you the shirt off of their back if you need it, stands by their family and community, and their country, I guess that is what I would say a hillbilly is to me. To me, that's a decent human and how we should all be. Maybe the world would be a little less crazy. And I have another one here that says, I view hillbilly as a derogatory term. The people who use it are usually uneducated about the diversity of the area. Which is the point that I'm trying to make. Um, I mean, basically, my respondents do not find the image of the hillbilly entertaining. Instead, they are generally offended by this Hollywood de depiction of what a hillbilly is. But regardless of how local Appalachians feel about the stereotype, it continues to prosper in our culture due to outside curiosity and fantasy. But basically, it sells to the ignorant public, which is super ironic, right? Why else would there be so much hillbilly memorabilia for sale in the Appalachian regions where people most often travel for vacations? Why else would there be films, cartoons, television shows, and other media that use that image? This stereotype is one that has survived for so long because it has been encouraged to stick around, whether willfully or hesitantly, because it makes money. Some of my findings in the archives of Appalachia, I also discovered some newspaper articles that specifically mention the inaccuracy of the image of Hollywood. One, published in 1994 by the Johnson City Press in East Tennessee, was written by Licia Payne Brooks, and it's titled tap dancer documentary built on stereotype of Appalachia and it actually starts verbatim vernacular dancer Jessica White may not represent the modern-day Appalachian but he is living proof the region's Hicks from the stick stereotype is alive and well and tap dancing its way from the hills of West Virginia to Hollywood I mean that right there says it all this guy is well aware that whatever it is that he's presenting in this documentary is not accurate but he's doing it anyway Another newspaper article that I found, published a year later by the same Johnson City Press and written by the same Payne Brooks, is titled Appalachians Portrayed as Ignorant Violent. The first page of this article is dressed with images of Dolly Parton and a shot from Andy Griffith's show on top and another image below the headline of a woman in character in a scene for the winter people. This article really digs into the trashy use of the hillbilly image in Hollywood. And I will read you some of it. Over the years, filmmakers and television have worked hard to vividly ingrain this image. In fact, in many cases, the entertainment industry has painted the people of the mountains not only as morons, but as monsters. And she's not wrong. A great example of this, and she actually mentions this later in the article, is the popular horror Deliverance. Now, I have not actually seen this movie. I had to go and look up clips of it just to get an idea of what this movie was about. And I did not realize how influential this movie was in pop culture until I saw these clips. It's definitely a horror and every horror has to have a monster. In this sense, it's the hillbillies and nature. Boy, and you better pray good. Yeah. Hold that on. And while not all people are good people, not all Appalachian people are monsters either, such as what's depicted in this film, and it's disgusting, but that's what we're stuck with. Now another film that captures the hillbilly-esque is Oh Brother Where Art Thou? I absolutely love this movie. I don't think it represents Appalachia accurately, but it definitely does it a lot more accurately than anything else I've ever seen. It's somewhat based on Homer's The Odyssey. And it takes place in Mississippi in the 1930s and follows three runaway prisoners who are just trying to get back home. Two of the men are depicted as pretty dense for most of the film, and I think that's where most of the stereotype comes from. Um, while George Clooney's character, who is Ulysses, uh, seems to be the smartest and most logical of the group. Wait a minute. Who elected you leader of this outfit? Well, Pete, I figured it should be the one with the capacity for abstract thought, but... If that ain't the consensus view, then hell, let's put her to a vote. Suits me. I'm voting for yours truly. Well, I'm voting for yours truly, too. Okay. I'm with you. Now, this, you know, most likely is because of just how the Odyssey is set up. It's, that's just how the characters are. But to make it more into the setting, you have to incorporate that hillbilly education. 
All the characters speak with a very strong southern accent and they don't have the best grammar skills. So that also plays into that hillbilly image. Uh, in the process of their escape, these men inadvertently become a popular bluegrass band that they call uh, the Soggy Bottom Boys. Um, and while this isn't the most offensive of all depictions, it still adds to that stereotype of Southern Appalachia in Hollywood culture. honest, I don't really know what else to say about this. I feel like my point has been made. The popular image of the hillbilly, while generally used in a humorous fashion, is actually quite offensive to the people who live in the Appalachian region, even though some of them would still claim that they are hillbillies. This simply comes down to personal definition, I believe. Because some people were saying that a hillbilly is simply a person who lives in Appalachia, or is a good-hearted person who just doesn't live in the city. Those are perfectly acceptable definitions. It's just not what Hollywood has depicted a hillbilly to be. Regardless, hillbilly and even local Appalachian locations still see a monetary value in it, and will most likely to continue creating content in other media, so long as the ignorant public remains interested in it. All images and newspaper articles that I have shown here in this video are available for viewing at the Archives of Appalachia located on the East Tennessee State University campus in the fourth floor of the library if you want to check those out for yourself. And if you want to check out the films and television shows that I have mentioned in here, I believe you can rent them on YouTube and through Amazon. So if you would like to check out more of what I have to say about this topic, check out below, above. I'm not really sure where this video is going on the website. Um, but I do have some more information that you can read about it and where you can find a lot of the sources that I used. I hope that this was informational and made you a little more aware of how stereotypes can affect a culture.